one of the discussions that goes on in philosophy or theology, um, biblical studies, many different subject matters, is how can um, our field, say, in theology, Christian ethics, incorporate the insights of another field that operates with a different set of assumptions, a different methodology, such as, for instance, sociology. Um, some very powerful writing uh, trying to uh, explain the possibilities or the difficulties of such incorporation of ideas from other methodologies has uh, appeared in the last couple of decades raising uh, many issues about how theologians might have to rework or even reconstitute the ideas that are offered to us by sociological writers. Uh, to some extent the the field of sociology emerged as an intellectual um, opportunity to replace theology in intellectual life. So as you've probably heard before, in the Middle Ages, theology was referred to as the queen of the sciences. Any of you who have taken sociology classes, or definitely if you've majored in it, you've been told that sociology is the queen of the sciences. Again, this is the um, belief and assumption on the part of sociologists that religion and theology had reached the end point of its usefulness and that a new approach to studying humanity uh, would um, eventually replace it. Um, as you might imagine then, on those assumptions there are many uh, methodological issues which may exclude uh, much of what we consider central for theological understanding in um, one particular critique by John Milbank has said that the, the uh, work of sociology has been to, to push issues that are central to um, theology such as um, revelation, um, the possibility of relationship with God and God's participation in the world, uh, the role of um, the prophet as uh, speaking a word from God, etc. Pushing these to the margin as something that they are agnostic about, they don't know what to say about, um, with the result that such ideas simply fall out of the picture. Uh, Milbank calls this policing the sublime, that is, those things that are sort of beyond uh, a certain capacity to observe simply have to be policed, um, uh, put in place, and ignored. Consequently, um, theologians uh, who are cognizant of these methodological issues have at times sought to find uh, an alternate approach to talking about social existence which would not exclude uh, the place of theology, of religious life, uh, of the church as um, a divinely um, called out institution and not merely just one more human institution. And so McClendon is one of those theologians, and um, what we find in McClendon is a kind of um, turning to a couple of key concepts to help us think sociologically, almost an alternate sociology. It doesn't mean that he would have us ignore all that sociologists would teach us. Otherwise, if I were convinced of that, I wouldn't ask you to look to see what sociologists say in your papers. 
But on the other hand, he's trying to give us a framework in which we can speak uh, intelligently and intelligibly about the life of the church in relation to God and do so in a communal manner rather than merely uh, viewing the religious as sort of an ineffable, unspeakable, um, mystical experience. So those two concepts are uh, a biblical uh, concept, that of the powers and authorities, the principalities and powers, sometimes different translations use many words. And these terms appear over and over in the New Testament, uh, thrones, dominions, powers. Jesus speaks of the kingdom of God, the reign of God, as we translate that into a non-gender term. And, uh, and so, um, McClendon, following a, uh, um, what has become a very strongly uh, accepted view in the 20th century, is that these terms refer to the systems and structures of human existence. That there are um, political systems, uh, social systems, economic systems, and these systems are far and beyond individual behavior, but they are, um, they are the activity uh, of human corporate life, which takes on a greater uh, power than uh, the mere sum of its parts. And so uh, one of the ways that, say, modern psychology has acknowledged this is in the concept of mob behavior, you know, that when we find ourselves in the midst of a crowd, there is a kind of crowd spirit that um, can seem to overwhelm our personal choices and move us in certain directions. Certainly we observe a kind of uh, spirit that occurs, say, at... Uh, uh, athletic events or at uh, musical concerts where a kind of collective behavior emerges. Uh, we, we talk about team spirit in sports and um, there's a way we behave in the context of that mass of people uh, which goes beyond our, our personal uh, motivations and our personal um, uh, willing, etc. So that's one angle you might see to get into that. You, know, you notice that these terms in the New Testament, um, kingdom, uh, dominion, throne, principality, these are, these are terms which describe uh, political communities, political structures and structures of authority. And so there's many, many good reasons for us to recognize that uh, at the core of, of this language was the recognition of the Apostle Paul and others that there are collectivities of human life that go beyond um, the individual and beyond individuals making um, uh, choices and that, that come to dominate and um, shape our lives. And so this is one of the aspects of, a, of an alternate sociology is to recognize that these powers and dominions, these uh, principalities and authorities are, are structured and system aspects of our lives. And so the economy is a system um, and within the economy, um, you know, there's the banking system uh, which also has many institutions and uh, practices that are part of what constitutes that system. Um, and so uh, what we want to recognize is that when we use these terms, we're doing social analysis. We're not merely using uh, a kind of uh, code language for invisibility 
of certain beings. Um, now, there's no necessity of um, denying the possibility of invisible beings uh, with uh, malevolent purposes that might be at work in the world. Um, and so, uh, I'm not saying that it's impossible to include a concept of the demonic as we uh, use these terms, but that their primary uh, terminology is to describe the the structuring and system is, systems that shape human lives. Now the second part of McClendon's um, alternate so 